Abner. Careful now. This is a two-hand zone. Hey guys, check this out. I learned how to do this a couple days ago. Whoa, oh, nice, isn't that sweet? Woo. Hey dude, Puck, can you do anything? Let's do it. It's easy. Wait, wait, here we hop. go, here we go. Ready? Hey, ready? hey, here comes Captain Crazy. You need training wheels on that thing? Hey, don't run anybody over, old man. Ah, or get hit by a truck. <laughs> oh, nice one, Puck. <laughs> Enjoy the show. Let me help you. I can manage. Well, I know you can, but I'm not so sure about the bike. What about it? You're gonna hurt yourself. What did you come down here for? I wanted to see you. Mm -hmm. Dad, I think it's time to think about giving up the bike. I already gave up the truck. How am I supposed to get around? I can just plan on, on coming by and picking you up and driving you wherever you need to be. What is it, 20 miles from the valley? Yeah, but that's not a problem. What does your husband think you ought to do? My husband has a name. Oh, that's right. He does. He thinks we should leave you alone. <laughs> like the Eskimos do. You ever hear the story? Yes, several times, Dad. When you're too old to take care of yourself, they put you on an ice floe. And then you just drift out to sea. Doesn't take long, you finally fall asleep from the cold. Nature takes care of the rest. At least you serve some purpose in the food chain. <laughs> Polar bears would love it. Dad, I'm not going to let you be eaten by a polar bear. Oh, it makes more sense than putting people in a hole in the ground with a lot of crying about the, how much they're going to be missed when they never were before. All right, all right, Dad. I admit, I don't have the vaguest idea of what would make you happy. Do you think someone like me expects to be happy? Everybody deserves to be happy. 
Happiness is something you outgrow. Daddy, I don't want you to be alone. What's wrong with that? The bitterness, that's what's wrong with that. Don't you have any faith? <laughs> you mean religion? It's not for me. You took me to church on Sundays? I took you to see Santa Claus, too. Doesn't mean I believed in him. Don't step on that. You know what? I think it's time to do some shit. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's been too peaceful around here. Yeah, I saw that old geezer out by the pile of junkies building. Yeah. There was some witch with him. Really? <laughs> what would he do with one? I think he's an old man. Oh, you know what? She probably comes to change those diapers old geezers oh. wear. Man, they stink. Man, he ought to be in one of those old geezer places. I know. Shouldn't you kids be in school? It's a holiday. Really, which one? Support your local cops day, didn't you hear? <laughs> Ooh, he's coming. <laughs> you know anything about vandalism at the middle school last night? Is there vandalism at the middle school? Ooh. That sounds bad. What happened? Some punk kids got in and did some serious damage. Well, how do you know it was kids? Could have yeah. been anybody. Adults, old people. It's not fair that kids always get the blame. Yeah. A big joke, huh? You won't be laughing if we find out you had something to do with it. Maybe we can help you find the ones that did it. We'll talk to that old nut with the boat. Maybe he saw something. But he's probably as blind as a bat. <laughs> oh, yeah. You do want to support your law enforcement day. Stay away from him, understand? Oh. Oh. Did you hear me? I said stay away. Yes, sir, officer. Enjoy your holiday. You should go get some free donuts down at the shack. You watch yourself. And the rest of you too. Wise up. <laughs> get out of here! Go, go! Kids from the neighborhood. What do they want? Just to make life miserable. Stay away from that. What are you gonna do about it? Who wants? Come on. Dad, fight me. Dad, don't. Just let me call the police. Let them take care of this. Don't call. Why not? They're menacing you. I don't want the police here. Why, you haven't done anything wrong? No, but some people think I have. What did you do? Uh, they say it's an eyesore, the boat. Yeah, but it's on your property. Just let it be. Hey, you, lady. They got a junkyard for car wrecks? Why don't you put this thing in a boat wreck yard? Yeah, with him in it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Dad, this is just another reason that I worry about you. I can take care of myself. I've got a boat to build. How long has it been since you've made any progress on this boat? What do you know about what I've been doing? All you know is I'm not dead yet. I know that you're angry at the world and you've been taking it out on all of us. That's enough! Do you hear me? Enough! Not another word. What are you going to do, send me to bed without my supper? Do I ever do that? A few times. Without your supper. Dad, are you remembering to take your medication? You have to remember to take your pills. It's not important enough to remember taking pills. Oh. Okay. 
by Dad. Uh, be careful. Are you all right? Yeah. Is someone chasing you? Yeah, on bikes. Do you want some help? No. <sighs> Call me, Dad. Okay? I'll leave a message. What are you standing here for? I was trying to get away from those kids. What do they do to you? They were trying to pants me. They were trying to put pants on you? No, no, no. Take them off, then throw them up a tree. Why would they do that? I don't know. They think it's funny, I guess. I don't. Did your parents send you to spy on me? I don't have parents. Not real ones. Hmm. You're an orphan? A bastard. Where do you learn to talk like that? Hey. You're not a bad word. Says who? My uncle. I heard them say it since I never had a father. Everybody has a father sometime. Jesus didn't. <laughs> Jesus. Jesus. Do you have a father? No. You a bastard. Well, <laughs> that depends on who you ask. Maybe your father's with my mom. <laughs> How do you figure that? Well, did he die? What do you think? If he was still here, he'd be 115 years old. That's cool. Uh, tell me about it. My mom's up there, in heaven. She sees everything I do. That's why I can't cuss or get in trouble in school. She says it all. Here's everything I say. Who told you that? My uncle. Well, this uncle of yours. Is he a preacher? A lawyer. Just as bad. What's that? It's a boat. A sailing sloop. Those kids dare you to come down here and get Captain Crazy's goat. That's what they call me. Did you know that? Yeah. I heard them. Uh-huh. I bet you did. They killed Max. Who's that? He was my dog. He's probably up there with your mom now. Why'd they do that? Uh, how should I know? <clears throat> Maybe they killed him because he was getting old. Did they shoot him? Oh. Uh, rat poison in his food. You know what that does to an animal? They couldn't just, just let him not wake up one morning. That's what my mom did. She just stayed asleep one day. Hmm. You gonna work on the boat today? Oh, uh, maybe I will before the storm starts. Do you think I could ever help you? Help me? 
makes you think you can work on something like this? Huh. You know what this is? You know where to use it? It's for rigging the mast. Do you even know where that is? Sorry, made you mad. Damn it, I'm not mad. I said I'm not mad. Poor little bastard. Jeez. That's it? Yeah, it's a sailing sloop. It's a pile of junk. Looks like something that didn't finish falling down. The man who lives in that house, he's working on it. It's gonna have sails so it can go across the ocean. <laughs> Why not wings, too? It's a boat, just sails. How'd you meet this man, Ricky? I ran into his yard by accident. What do you mean by accident? Some kids were chasing me. Oh no, again? Ricky, you can't just go running into some old man's yard. It's dangerous. Not as dangerous as not running in. I don't know, you gotta start trying to make friends here, man. It'll help. Where do you find friends? You know, sometimes I think that blank stare of yours is just an act. You're not really that vacant. Listen, Ricky, you know, when your mom was sick, her biggest concern wasn't herself, it was you. And your Aunt Jean and I made her a promise that we'd look out for you, make sure you were safe and happy. And when those foster families didn't work out, we've been doing everything we can to keep that promise. But you have to help us make this work. You understand? I guess. All right, come on, we're gonna... Come on, we should get out of here. What the special today, Abner? What is it? Same as it was yesterday. <laughs> and every day. Yeah. <laughs> then why do they call it the special? Because it's so special. The way Mo cooks it, and I serve it. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I'll have a special today. How's the boat coming, Abby? Like it's special. How's that? It doesn't change. How long you been working on it? Since you heard about the flood coming. What flood? The big one. Only his name isn't Noah. <laughs> <laughs> No joking, Admiral. When you finish building that boat, what are you going to do with it? I'm going to get on it and sail off. Where to? Some place where people don't ask so many questions. You don't have to get so touchy about it. We care about you, even if you get a little grumpy. Leave the man alone. Uh, that's a pretty good idea. Hey, seriously, Abner. Where are you going to take it? Across the Pacific. To where? No place in particular. How do you plot a course for that? You don't. You gotta have a destination. I do. But you're gonna keep it a secret from your friends. From myself, too. Sounds to me like an escape. From what? From us. I'll drink to that. <laughs> well, we'd miss you, Abner. <laughs> but I doubt he'd miss you. Hey, now, that's no way to get me into bed. <laughs> <laughs> Are you 
you still mad at me? Hey, Ricky, leave him alone. I told you, I'm not mad. I'm just busy. This is my Uncle Charles. Oh, the boy tells me he likes to work with his hands. Oh, yeah, well, he actually is interested in tools. You, uh, still want to help me? Yeah. It can be tricky oh, work. No, Ricky, I really don't think you should be climbing up on this, uh, on this, uh... 26 foot sloop. Oh. <laughs> I'm sorry, it just doesn't look like something a boy his age should be climbing on. Uh, don't say you're letting him do any climbing for now. If he helps me, he stays on the ground. Maybe passing me things, at least until he gets his legs. You know, we can talk about this at home. We should get going. Can I stay just for a little? Ricky, you can't hang around bothering the man. He wants to stay. Okay by me. I, I really don't want him getting in the way or, or hurt. Oh, not much chance of that. He tells me his mother's watching him. God, too. No way he's going to get in trouble with an audience like that. I want you home in 30 minutes. We just came back from the doctor, you know, at, at this place. I think it's like a hospital or maybe a school. A home? No, there aren't any mothers or fathers there. Just doctors and nurses, I think. <laughs> Sounds familiar. You been there? To another one. A place for kids? People like me. People that build boats? Uh, that make other people uncomfortable. How do they do that? Uh, it's easy. Nobody knows what to do with people like me. So they put them someplace that are out of sight. Where they don't have to see us. Storage. What? They say it's best for you, except they forget to ask if you think it is. Yeah, that's how my uncle is. He only wants what's best for me. Since I have problems. Uh -huh. And he doesn't. <laughs> Guess not. Uh -huh. What would happen to your boat if you went to one of those places? Oh, it wouldn't get built. It would just stand there until the wind and the sand and the sea eat it away. It would just be a heap of wood in the sand. I wouldn't want that to happen. It won't. And I'm not going to a home. There's just one place I'm going. Out there, dead or alive, that's where I'm headed. How can you go there if you're dead? There you go. Ask me a lot of questions again. Sorry. It's just hard to answer some of them. Would you sink to the bottom if you were dead in the ocean? You want to help me or not? Yeah. Then come over here. And I'll Hold the ladder for me. Right. Put one foot on the bottom rung and hold the side steady. All right. You're holding tight? Real tight. All right. Now, don't let go of anything. I won't. All right. Now, hand me that pail of waterproof for you on the ground. How can I do that? What do you mean, how? I can't let go of the ladder. Is that supposed to be funny? No. You're right. It's not. <laughs> Just let go enough with one hand and pick up the pail. Careful, don't spill it. 
I don't think your uncle would like to see you with a waterproofed head. This stuff doesn't come off. Ever? Uh-huh. You go around looking like a bowsprit the rest of your life. What's that? It's the front near the bow going through the air. In the old days, they used to put wooden sculptures, usually women there. But I guess you could put a kid on it. What color's the boat going to be? It's going to be white on the hull. The hull's the bottom part, rise in the water. The sails will be white, too. And the deck, a good, dark mahogany. And the gunnels, they'll be black. Is that where the guns go? The gunnels are the top edge of the top of the hull. It goes all the way around. No guns. Sailboats used to have guns in the olden days. Yeah. Cannons. That they did. It was serious business sailing on them. If you stepped out of line, ah, you got keel hauled. Sounds bad. Keel hauling. What was it? It was punishment for getting the ship in danger. They tie a line to your hands and one to your feet. Then they toss you overboard into the cold black sea. The crew on one side would pull the line in. On the other side, they'd hold the line tight to keep the poor devil against the keel. Huh? It was covered with barnacles, huh? crusty little creatures that were as sharp as broken glass. Does that make the man die? Oh, not usually. Just turn his back into raw hamburger. He'd do some serious praying that the mates on deck didn't take their time, pulling him around and up. If they did, he could drown. That's a really scary story. I can tell you've never been to sea took me once on a big boat out in the ocean. No sails on it, though. Uh, to Catalina? I think so. Well, that's a start, a ferry ride. They have to follow rules there, too. If they don't, they'll get keel hauled? <laughs> I doubt there's ever been a hauling on the Catalina ferry. Man, man. Might not be such a bad idea, though. Yeah, maybe for those kids that chase me into your yard. Sure. <laughs> Kill all them for taking your pants. And calling you names. <laughs> yeah. When did you tell him to come home? I said half an hour. Well, isn't he overdue? You know how he is with time, like everything else. Do you think he's all right? I certainly hope so. One supper. We're waiting for Ricky to come home. I figures. That's what we're always doing. Never mind, Donnie. He'll be home pretty soon. You better be. Peter's coming over after we eat. Oh, yeah? And what are you guys doing that can't wait? Peter has the new Aliens game. Oh, no, no. Isn't that rated M? His parents don't have a problem with it. But we do. Why? Uh, for one thing, I don't want Ricky to watch it. Oh, don't worry. I didn't invite him. We'll talk about that later. And don't speak to your mother that way. What way? You know what I'm talking about. Yeah, sure. We shouldn't do anything that might bother poor little Ricky. Yeah, okay, that's what I'm talking about. Just stop it! You know, he's right. We always have to walk on eggshells all the time worrying about what we say in front of Ricky. Don't do this, he might not understand. Don't say that, he might hurt his feelings. Do you ever stop to think what that boy's been through since his mother died? Three foster homes before we took him in. Besides, don't we get paid to take him in anyway? <laughs> to help with expenses for another member of this household. But I don't like what you're implying, as if we're only interested in a little money. Okay, I didn't mean it that way. Ruth, you have to realize that there was no place else to go. And at least here, he's with his own family. And I know it's not easy for you kids to accept that. But the least we can do is try to make him feel like he belongs. Even if he doesn't? Ruthie. Really. What 
What's it like on the ocean when you're far away from everything? You have to pay attention to everything around you. And when the wind picks up, you see the white caps in the building. The seas tell you twin sails and reef in and take the swells from the quarter. When the waves break over the bow, you take down the jib and secure the boom. Those are orders you have to obey will be a lot worse than a kill hole. Does it ever get nice? The ocean? Well, when it's getting ready, <laughs> after a long storm, a calm can set in just as quick as the foul weather drop down. The clouds break open to a blue you have seen for days. Water settles into a smooth roll. A little later, the sky turns orange, and the sun gets bigger and looks on fire. Then it slips down over the edge of the sea until just before it's gone, a flare pops, a bright green circle. Yeah, before things go dark. Like it's starting to do now. It's like someone out there heard you and made it happen. Well, maybe they did. Well, what happens next? Well, you set the help. Supper. And you start counting the stars, but you don't get far. There are millions of them. You sit back and figure you've done all right for another day. And you're free. That's what you are. Yeah, free. That's what I want to be. Maybe on a boat out in the ocean. I think your half hour has been over for a while. Your uncle and aunt are probably wondering where you are. They better get going. Wait till they hear what you taught me. Might not be what they want to hear. Thank you. For what? For letting me help. And the story. Uh huh. Having a dream. I was. It was so real. I was in the ocean. Oh, you're safe in bed. What was that you were yelling about? Dropping the sails and reefing something? We were on the boat. Who? Me and the captain. So that's it. In a real bad storm and it fell off. I should have known better than to let you hang around that old man. It wasn't his fault. It was a really, really horrible, horrible storm. Now you're not just hanging around his place. It's giving you nightmares. You know what, Ricky? Your Aunt Jean and I have to have another talk with you tomorrow. What about? About the kind of trouble you could be getting into. It wasn't trouble, just a dream. I'm not talking about a dream. Look, we'll discuss it tomorrow. Now, good night. Uncle Charles? What is it? 
I learned about waterproofing a hole today. Good night, Ricky. So where are they? Seeing some doctor. A shrink at a home for kids. What's that about? It's about Ricky. What else is it ever about? You think they're saying we're not being fair to him? Probably. It's never his fault, is it? Mom told me he came home feeling good about something yesterday. He met this old man who's building a boat. That old fart down by the beach? That's just great. Every kid in town hates that guy. Why? It's just weird. That stupid pile of junk he calls a boat. <sighs> That's no reason for kids to hate him. I think he's crazy. He hasn't done anything wrong. Why can't everyone just leave him alone? I just think the faster Ricky's out of here, the better off we're all going to be. Why do you think he's going to get out? I heard Dad tell Mom that he's too destructive. Of what? Of everything. He complains that we don't like him, don't want him around. Do you want him around? No, I don't. He was pretty good around here until he came along. Maybe we should give him another chance. I just hope they put that little freak in a home and we're out of it all. You know something? He's not the real freak of this house. You are. Take Ow! it back! Ow! Quit it! Take it back! Quit it! Let me up! Take it back! I can't breathe! Hey! Hey, 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 hey. what's going on here? Let her up. Right. Tell them about your friends. The ones who ride around on their bikes and think they're some big, tough motorcycle gang. They're always after Ricky. They brag about pantsing him, call him the little bastard. Why don't you shut up? You know what you're talking about. All right, that's enough. Is there any truth to this? Let's just talk. No, it isn't. Well, Donnie? Ask me. Is it true, Ruth? I heard Donnie talking to his friend Peter on the phone, laughing about it. All right, you listen to me. I'm only gonna ask you this once, Donnie. Did you have anything to do with this? No. I swear, I didn't. He didn't. Do you know who these kids are? I don't know their names, but they ride around on bikes trying to make people feel bad. And they laugh a lot about it. It's not just me. They do it to the captain, too. But I don't want them to think that I'm telling on them. It'd just be worse. They're not going to know, Ricky. It's okay. Unless somebody here lets them know. Don't look at me. I'm not going to say anything. We'll see to it that you don't. We're sorry, Ricky. It's very unfair what those boys are doing. And so is the kind of thing Donnie's been saying. And you know we don't feel that way about you, right? Well, we don't, Ricky. And we won't tolerate it. You calling me a bastard? I'm... I'm sorry, man. Yeah, even that. How come your uncle saw with you? He's talking to my aunt at home about that place they want to send me. <laughs> well, I guess we should be glad people are doing what's best for us. I suppose. But I really don't want to go to any place. I don't care if it's best for me. Maybe they won't make me go if I behave better. Stop making trouble. You making trouble? Then how are you going to stop doing something you're not doing in the first place? I don't know. 
guess I'm just gonna have to make them believe me. That's an idea. Maybe if I can make my daughter think I'm not really doing things she thinks I'm doing that I never did in the first place, she'll stop trying to put me away. I guess. He's picking up. Here it comes. We better get moving. Yeah, we better get to work. Come on. You're going up there with me today. Maybe start getting some sea legs. It's about time. Yes. It's you. What are you doing here this time of night? What do you got all over yourself? You did this? Don't tell me you did it. You've got that paint all over yourself. I swear, I didn't! Don't lie! If you didn't do it, then who did? I can't tell you. Of course you can, because there's nothing to tell. You wanted to help me. You wanted to learn how to use your hands. Well, you learned how to use them, all right? Ricky? What are you doing here? Well, just take a look! God, you did this? I swear, I didn't. I saw some kids doing it. I tried to stop them, but I couldn't. What kids? Those bad kids on bikes. Tell me the truth. It'll only get worse if you don't. He's got that paint! Huh? All over him! The kids put it on me! I'm calling the police. 
Oh, no, I really wish you wouldn't. Why is that? Look, I know you're upset. I, I, I would be too. But please, let me take care of this. How are you gonna do that? I'll see that everything is repaired. Any cost to do it, I'll make good on them. You're gonna take care of this with money? What do you want me to do, beat him? What I want you to do, what I want him to do, is leave me alone. Everybody! Stay off my property! Stay away from my boat! Just let me do what I want to do! Just leave me alone. Come on, Ricky, let's go home. Last three new messages. Message one. Dad, I'm sorry. I worry about you. Okay, I'll see you later. Oh. Message two. <sighs> Look, Dad, call me. Message three. <laughs> call me, Dad. End of messages. so beautiful. A cancer was a monster. Tore you apart, but you never complain. You just worry about me. Oh. I get out there and 
Let's see what the weather's doing. work done today. Hi, Abner. What are you doing here? Catherine baked you a cake. She says it's your favorite. Upside down cake. My mother used to make it. Abner, could we just sit down for a minute? I've got work. Yeah, well, that's kind of what I wanted to talk to you about. Abner, do you think maybe it's time to call it quits on this? <laughs> I'm going to see, no matter what, even if I drop dead. And if I do, you know who's going to get me there? Your wife. What are you talking about? She's going to gather up my ashes and put them in a jar, stand out on the end of the pier, and, and let me lie. Excuse me? Hello? What are you doing here? I didn't do it. You've got to believe me. I should believe you? Just because you got paint in your hair? He's telling the truth. Well, who might you be? I'm Ruth, his cousin. He lives with our family. I heard my brother Donnie on the phone last night. Ricky tried to stop them. That's why they did that to his hair. I just wanted you to know, you shouldn't blame Ricky. What does your father think about all this? I can tell he's pretty unhappy. He's not alone. He just wants to help. Give him a chance. Okay, Abner. Gotta go. Thanks for the cake. See you later. What's going on with you? I think I'm getting sent to that place with the doctors and stuff. The thing that happened to the boat last night, my uncle says it was the last straw. That I need to go and see someone for my problems. Sure. You got problems, just sell them off to somebody else. Right? Well, what are you gonna do? I don't know. Maybe run away? Would it be all that bad to go to this place? Yeah, if it's anything like the place I had to go before my aunt and uncle got me. Home? It was a farm for kids. Oh. Oh. The kids were pretty bad. Some of them were in gangs. Sounds familiar. Did they ride around on bikes? No. But they did some pretty scary stuff to other kids. What kind of stuff? One night, these kids in a gang got me out of bed. 
Take me to this barn. You ready to run with the wolves? Like we do? I don't know. Well, there's only one way to find out, isn't there? Say hello to wolf. Part dog and part wolf. Mostly wolf. He's gonna be uh, watching over you tonight. Just to make sure you don't go anywhere that wouldn't be uh, safe. He'd be pretty upset if you left him all by himself. Just show us what you're made of. Yeah, don't do anything stupid like try to take off for nothing, okay? Because you wouldn't want to make Wolfie angry now, would you? We'll see you tomorrow. Won't we? the boat. Why? Be because that's what friends do. We're friends? You already have one? <laughs> oh. Well, I guess maybe I don't. They're hard to find. I have one either. I never have. You should have one. Someone your age. Why not someone your age? There you go. Asking questions again. If you want to help me, don't ask so many questions, especially questions I can't answer. I don't imagine you've ever laid deck plank. Not many people have. You know what a deck is? Uh, houses have floors. Boats have decks and bulkheads. You know what a bulkhead is? A wall? No windows either. Patches and ports. Now, instead of wasting any more of my time, why don't you hand me a couple of those boards there? That's it. Uh, you know your left from your right? Forget about them. Let's see. Because there's port and starboard. Port is left. Starboard is right. Think he could remember all that? No floors, decks. Bulkheads, not walls. Um, no doors or windows. Hatches and port and starboard. Good enough. Starboard. I think you can drill holes for the rivets. Into this property? I'm not an occupant. I own this property, and you happen to be on it without an invitation. I'm not buying anything. I'm not selling anything. I'm a county inspector, zoning department. Well, that's so. We received a complaint. Well, what about? This construction you're doing. What about it? It's non-conforming. Is that right? It's not. It doesn't conform to anything. I don't either. What you're doing isn't allowed. This neighborhood is zoned residential. The only construction allowed is an addition to a residence with proper permits. 
I didn't find any permits filed. I, I don't expect you would. The law is very clear. Commercial activity is prohibited on property zoned R0. Said activity includes manufacturing, repair of maintenance, of machinery, of vehicles, warehousing, or construction of trailers, aircrafts, and boats. Are you telling me that I can't build something for my own use? On my own private property? Look, I'm just doing my job. And that's what I'm doing, my job. And you're holding me and my helper here up with all the double talk. I'm sorry, but I've got to act on a complaint. Who's making a complaint? I can't say. It came from the neighborhood. Oh. Isn't that neighborly? Who are these people? Maybe they don't like the looks of each other anymore, or they're mad about their jobs or their taxes. So here's something to take their minds off things. Call an inspector and complain about some crazy old son of a bitch who just wants to live in peace. And hear the beat of the tide on his boat. I don't know who's behind it. I just know what my job is. I'm leaving you a notice to cease and desist non-conforming activity. What if I don't? Then the county will come in with a bulldozer and do it for you. Two weeks. I'm sorry. I suppose I could give in. Just sign the documents of surrender up there on the deck, like they do at the end of a war. Hand of my sword. Don't do that. You got any better ideas? Finish the boat before that man comes back. Finish it in two weeks? You must think you're pretty good with that hammer. You are. Not that good. After the deck's on, the hatches have to be set. Steering, hardware, none of it's in yet. Three coats of paint, varnish. The mass is not even in yet. The rigging. Fourteen days. You've got big ideas. There's nights too. Hey, you think your uncle and aunt are gonna let you come out at night? I can get out on my own. There's not enough time. But they'll come with the bulldozer. Over my dead body. Yeah, over mine too. Now can I have some more rivets? What for? I'm not gonna do anything done asking a whole lot of questions now, are we?
Buying that thing? No, I'm not buying it. You gonna go fishing it or something? No fishing. Captain Crazy will have a real no. shit fit if he sees you poking around that thing. You boys have some business here? Maybe we do, maybe we don't. Who's asking? Zoning Enforcement Department. Yeah, I heard somebody complain about Captain Crazy's stupid boat, and now it's gonna be torn down. You kids have no idea what's being done here. Just in a short time, he's repainted, finished the woodwork, he even fixed a broken rudder that some gang of rotten kids tried to smash. But you wouldn't know anything about that, would you? Don't look at us. I am looking at you. Why don't you go bother somebody else? It's a free country. Yeah. Free. Hey guys, maybe we should have a goodbye party for old Captain Crazy. <laughs> hey Schmidt. That's right. I know your name. Be careful. You guys, let's go. Yeah. I don't know. See you at the demolition derby. Got a boat here. Yeah, we've got a boat. Let's check her out. Oh boy. Fourteen days. All she needs now is a brisk offshore breeze and a name. How do you name a boat? You want to. You want a name that brings you luck. Memories to think about when you're away from port. You got any ideas? Could you name a boat mom? Yeah, yeah, you could. <laughs> I had one, one idea that I don't think you'd find on anybody's transfer. Take a look. <laughs> now we got a boat, and we got a name for a boat. Oh, pretty good for a carpenter. My uncle says Jesus was a carpenter. Uh, 
let's not go there right now. <laughs> so, let me have a little bass heading west, southwest, past the Farallon Islands, then due west, riding a steady wind, coming over the port quarter. On the left side? Right. No, I'm pretty sure it's the left. When does it go into the water? Oh, about an hour before daybreak, I, I figure, when the tide breaks. How does it go into the water? Oh, you see those, you see those wheels under the keel there? You hitch it up, pull it around the bend over there, wait for the tide to come up, get it placed, unhook it, and out it goes. Where? Oh, a place you've never, ever been before. Some place you've never seen. Maybe me neither. Is it an island? Might be. Is it on a map? It might be. Are there people on it? I hope not. What do you do there? Mostly what you want. Not what you don't want. How far is it? Hard to say. Maybe 3,000 miles. I want to go to sea, too. You can't do that. Didn't I do a good job? No, oh, you did a great job. But you don't understand where I'm headed. Yeah, thousands of miles away. The ocean is enormous. Bigger than anything you can imagine. Just gotta be a little speck on it, like a grain of sand on this beach. Maybe I'll have enough food and water to last till landfall. Or maybe I won't. The storms that can send me to the bottom, or to the sharks. I may never see you again. Some things you gotta do alone. You'll learn that someday. This is Helen Grant at the beach where a troubling story is developing. Abner Green, who had been building a boat that was vandalized and nearly destroyed by a gang of juveniles, was served with an order from the county to remove or tear down the vessel. Now, Green refused to obey the order, and a bulldozer arrived about an hour ago to dispose of the boat. But the vessel, a sailing sloop, we're told along with Green, is gone. It appears the elderly and determined man may have actually launched the boat and put out to sea. Whoa, oh my God. It's not there anymore. It's actually gone. Now at this moment, Coast Guard helicopters are searching offshore, but there seems to be no trace of the boat, which we've been told is named the Little Bastard. Now it's, his, the man's son-in-law is right here. Excuse me, sir, could you tell me, do you have any idea what happened to your father-in-law? He obviously launched his boat. Well, are you concerned for his safety? Are we concerned? A man in his late 70s, alone on the open ocean in a homemade boat. Never been in the water. Wouldn't you be concerned? Well, is it even seaworthy? I honestly don't know. So we've been told that Mr. Green is a retired merchant seaman. Yes, he was a captain. Do you know when he left? My wife and I imagine during the night. So high tide was at 4.45. Okay, so that means that he's been gone at least about eight hours. Could you tell us, do you know how far he could get? It depends. Uh, he'd have a brisk wind behind him. 
he could be well past the Farallon Islands if he went in that direction. Were you planning on demolishing the boat? It was ordered by the county. Why do you think a man of his age would do something like this? Because he couldn't deal with all the people who refused to leave him alone. And who were they? His neighbors, the courts, all of us. If you could speak to Mr. Green Captain right now. Captain Green. If you could speak to Captain Green right now, what would you want to say to him? I'd say, sail it, Abner. Sail it well. Helen Grant for News Center One. How could your wife do this to her own father? She had no choice. She had to do the right thing. She was just desperate to save him. She couldn't let things be. She had to get people to sign a petition to the county. Look what's happened now to a harmless old man. You don't understand. He can't survive out there alone. Tough story. Sad story. You're not going soft on us, are you? I think I am. Why? Because I've got a father, too. Authorities seem less confident that they will be able to locate the man and his homemade boat. This is slope. We asked Commander Jerome Kraft of the San Francisco Coast Guard Station what he thinks the lone sailor's chances are. His response? We can only hope. You stole away on me. You stole away on me. <sighs> Just stay right there. I want to see what kind of mess you made down below. you're doing. What's this? Sorry. You're gonna kill, homie? 
I'm thinking about it. Just hold that straight now. Don't get fancy on me. Never thought I'd be doing this. Yeah. What am I supposed to do with you? I, I could be your first mate. Just, just hold it there a second. All right, close your eyes. Close them. Out of the way. Hey, take it off. Look at it. You want to be first mate? That's a first mate's hat. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> you are something else. Oh, no, you gotta go. You gotta go to the starboard, to the right, starboard, you remember that? No, 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 no. Pull it this way. Starboard is right. But there's no right, you gotta pull left. A little more, a little more. There you go. All right. <laughs> You're sailing now, aren't you? You crazy little bastard. Somewhere out there across the sea Dreams are true and life is free And you ride the tide of dancing foam Till at last you know you've made it home You're sailing now, sailing true to a promised land You're sailing now, sailing true to a land Waiting for you Waiting for you When the sun has dropped on one more Lights our magic way The wind will come As a friend And guide you through The journey's end Where dreams come true And fears are past Your hands are up to the task All you've been searching for Will be yours At last promised land You're sailing now Sailing true to a land Waiting for you, you. 
waiting for you. upon your back, put to sea and cross the deep, they wait for you, the dreams you keep, for you sailing now, sailing true to a promised land, you're sailing now, sailing true to a land, waiting for you.